Hey there, it's Luke from the M5 Stack official channel. This week we have a beginner lesson for you in UI Flow. We're going to be using one of the sensor units, which doesn't appear in the Units tab of UI Flow. It's the OP180 or OP90 unit. It has a black port, so we know that it goes into port B. Even though this sensor doesn't show up in the unit section, it's easy to program with as it's a digital sensor. We've talked about digital sensors in the past and that they only output a zero or a one. But what exactly does this sensor do? This sensor is an optical switch, also known as a photo interrupter. Basically, it consists of a plastic slot with an LED in one side and a photo transistor in the other. The photo transistor catches the line and turns it into a voltage. If the beam of light is broken, we'll receive a high voltage or a 1. If nothing breaks the beam, there'll be a 0 or low voltage. We can create a simple program to test this by dragging a label onto the M5 screen, creating a loop, and then using the digital read block in the Easy I.O. panel and setting its value to 36 which is pin 36 found in the black port. We then place that in the label block so that we can display it on the screen whenever there is a change. I'll now demonstrate it with a simple wheel with a piece of tape on it that I've placed in this Lego enclosure. As you can see when the tape blocks the sensor we get a 1. Otherwise we'll get a 0. We can use this to check when our bicycle wheel has turned one full revolution. So what are we going to need to make this project on our bicycle? Firstly we'll need a disc. I found this one in a pack of old CDs. The OP180 or OP90 sensor depending on at which angle you're going to mount your sensor. A Grove cable, preferably a long one so that we can connect the unit to the M5 stack device and place it on our handlebars. An M5 stack device such as a Fire, Go, Basic or Stick C. Any of these will work. And we'll also need a Sharpie or permanent marker to make a mark on the disc. Or you could also use tape as I showed in the previous example. Use a ruler to make a straight line or to position your tape. You may also need to make the hole at the center of your disc bigger so that it can fit onto the wheel. Be careful not to break your disc when doing so. Next we need to remove the front tire from our bike. It may be held on by bolts or have a quick release system, depending on the model of your bike. Before attaching the disc to your wheel, make sure to use a tape measure to measure the diameter of your wheel and make a note of it as we'll need this number for later. Now we're back in UI Flow, we can start to build up our program. Firstly, we'll create a variable to hold the amount of revolutions of our wheel. We'll then initialize that in the setup phase of our program. We'll then create another variable which I'll call distance to hold the amount of distance that we have traveled. Again, we'll initialize this to zero. Now we're going to need some logic from the logic blocks. Grab an if do block and place it below the label block. Then go back into the logic blocks and find the comparator block. In the first slot, we'll copy our digital read pin 36. And in the second, we'll place a math block and set it to one. Now we can go back into the variable section Choose the change by block and set it to change revolutions by one for every single time the sensor is triggered. Now we can drag an extra text label and add an extra label block to display the revolutions. Now we can use a button A pressed event so we can press the A button to check how much distance we've traveled. To calculate the distance we've traveled we'll use the distance variable that we created and then multiply it by the diameter of our wheel. Mine was 220 centimeters. In order to get the amount of distance in kilometers that we've traveled, we'll need to convert centimeters into kilometers. 
We can do this by dividing distance by 100,000. To reset our bike computer back to zero, we can use a B button pressed event to clear the variables back to zero. Lastly, we'll need to add another label to the screen and then add a label UI block to display distance traveled. And then we can use this block from the text section to add kilometers after that number. Make sure to change the label number for this label. And now we're ready to test. Attach the OP180 sensor securely to the fork of your bike. Then make sure the disc can pass freely through the gap in the sensor. Once you've secured everything, including the M5 stack device to the handlebars, you can also secure a power bank to charge the M5 stack on longer journeys. Unfortunately, it's been raining a lot recently, so I haven't been able to get out and test this. So here's a clip you can watch of my colleague riding around on this bike with the M5 stack device attached to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.